Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, continuing our discussion with Ambassador Meligi. Your Excellency, now on the topic, now, as you've mentioned, Egypt is the name that's been called upon by all international media, all world leaders, delegations, prime ministers, leaders meeting and calling President Sisi regarding the conflict. Even yesterday we saw the U.S. Senate, a high-level delegation from uh, Republicans and Democrats from the U.S. Senate coming to uh, meet the president, even though President Sisi made the Egyptian stance very clear. Now, what are they proposing? What are they offering? What do they want to know? Because obviously they wouldn't be wanting to know the, the updates on the situation there. They can follow it. Well, first of all, I mean, there were many reports, and I believe they were true, that even President Biden failed to convince the Israelis that they have to respect the international law with their bombardment of Gaza. And uh, it seems that they were so provoked by what happened, as I mentioned before, mm -hmm. the 7th of October, that they insisted that they would have to wipe Gaza out. The idea of wiping Gaza out then there is no, no one else to turn to except Egypt. Mm -hmm. And this is why everybody is trying to see what Egypt's role is going to be in this. And I see Egyptian role in two things. First of all, to defend its own borders. And I, I believe that this is, should be our first task, is to defend our own borders from any aggression, from any intrusion. And the second thing is to continue our talks with all the parties concerned. And uh, th this is the only thing w w we can do. But as I mentioned before, in order to speak, you have to have someone to listen. And in order to speak with the Israelis, they have to be listening. The Israeli at this point, they are not ready to listen to anything. So the idea is that with all goodwill, not just from Egypt, we will, call, we will say from the international community, mm -hmm. from the whole world. If Israel is not ready to accept, and it has already the unlimited support of the West, when will it stop? And will it ever stop before doing what they want to do? But now we have to, to, to talk about logistics. Where will those Palestinians go? I mean, how many are they going to kill more? I mean, are they going to reach 20, 30,000? We are talking about one and a half million or two million in Gaza. They cannot kill all of them. So what will they do? At a certain point, they have to stop. I think Egypt's role or anybody's role is to try to stop this before more people are dead mm -hmm. and before more vengeance feelings are inside the Palestinians, which will create another attack maybe later on. We don't want this. Egypt doesn't want this, and nobody in the world wants this. We want peace in the region. But in order to have peace in the region, as I said from the beginning, and they will keep saying it until the end, we have to end the occupation. We have to start working for this two-state solution, if it will ever work. But it will need, it will need from Israel that it understands. Israel insists that the, the solution for it, for it is to be able to accomplish mm -hmm. what it wants without having to pay the price. Sir, so you've mentioned the, the priorities for Egypt, protecting their borders, talking to all parties, but is there a role to be played by countries such as Russia or China or the Gulf countries? Can they play some sort of a role, have some sort of an influence regarding the conflict in Gaza? Can they pressure the West? Can they pressure uh, Israel into at least sitting down, having a ceasefire? Well, I don't want to be pessimistic, but I don't think so. And it's quite clear why. I mean, if the Americans themselves failed to convince the Israelis that they have to have limit for this aggression, for these attacks, for these maneuvers, whatever you want to call it, and they couldn't, and so far, we didn't see that Israel is trying to stop or to halt. So do you think that a country that is considered, well, not a friendly country, let's say like Russia, why? Because as you know, uh, Israel is supporting Ukraine and Ukraine supported Israel, so definitely Russia is the opponent, so they will not have the same kind of support from Russia. So they will, they will not listen to the Russians. They will listen only to the Americans if they want to listen. Mm -hmm. So the idea of having other countries try to convince, it has to be collective. 
It has to be collective. We've seen a few days ago if the United States really wanted to, uh, to stop this, they wouldn't have vetoed the, the United yes. Nations resolution, and not that just them. Mm -hmm. Don't forget that three countries vetoed it. Mm -hmm. It was the United States and the United Kingdom and France, the three of them both. So who are they going to listen to if the superpowers and the strongest people now in the world are supporting Israel in its aggression to the point that they don't want to blame it mm -hmm. in any way by UN resolution that actually Israel can just throw in the garbage yes. as it did with many before. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, one final question because we only have 30 seconds. Is there a role for the public opinion to play in actually any sort of developments regarding this issue, public opinion? Yes, there is a role that we have to spread everything we see. The Western public have to see the atrocities committed by the Israelis. We have to keep pushing in this side because this is the only thing we have. Because we can't change the media support for Israel. So at least let's try to have, of course, we know that, that the, 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 social, the social platforms are closed. Mm -hmm. Whenever you are talking about Hamas or talking about the Palestinian, they just block it. But we have to keep on sending to all the people yes. we know and from all over the world to explain to them the real picture of what's going on there. Yes. There are people being killed and we have to stop the killing. Ladies and gentlemen, definitely developments are taking place by the minute, as uh, you can tell. And obviously, we're going to be following all of it on Nile International. But unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this edition of the Daily Debate. Before we go, I'd like to thank my very distinguished guest, His Excellency Ambassador Midhat El Mirigi, the former Assistant Foreign Minister and our former Ambassador in Cameroon. Your Excellency, thank you very much for joining us this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, please stay tuned for more coming up on Nile International. I'm Henny Saif. Thank you for joining us.